So dear students, we are continuing with the discussions where we stopped in the last video. In the last video we have been seeing the calculation of strain energy for uh, cantilever beams. Now we are going to deal with the calculation of strain energy for a simply supported beam. Okay, so we'll see what the difference is. Say I'm starting with again with case one. So I'm taking the most familiar and the simple case of a point load P acting at the center of a beam. Simply supported beam. So let the constant be, the EI value be constant. The, con the beam is having constant flexural rigidity which means that the material is constant and the cross section is constant. Okay. So when we have such a problem here when we were having cantilever beam we were directly jumping into the segment and we were doing all those things. So here also we can do that but before that when you get a simply supported beam the first thing what you need to do is you need to calculate the support reactions. Okay. Say if this is A and this is B this is the support reaction RA and support reaction RB. So only if you have these values we can calculate the strain energies. Now we need to have the values of RA and RB. So the calculation of RA and RB involves the basic conditions that we learned from engineering mechanics that is the equations of equilibrium. So if I am substituting sigma MB equal to 0. So now I am going for summation of moment. In a previous video we mentioned what is the difference between summation of moment and a moment at a point. When we are going with summation of moment there is no need for us to go with the sign convention of sagging and hogging. We can directly go with the sign convention of clockwise and anti-clockwise. So let's see what's going to be the expression for sigma mb equal to 0. So I am taking moment with respect to this point. When I am taking moment with respect to point there is one force Ra okay, which has got a liveram of L by 2 plus L by 2 that is L. So Ra times L is in the clockwise. Okay, whether you want to, if you want to know whether a moment is clockwise or anti-clockwise, you can use the same scale. Okay, so this is the point where I want the moment. So I place it here, apply, this is Ra acting at the other end. So it rotates in the clockwise direction, right? So clockwise direction you can consider as the positive. So it's going to be plus Ra times L, okay, the contribution of Ra in the sigma mp. Now the other force is P and P is acting at a distance of L by 2. So P into L by 2, P times L by 2. Now I want to know whether it is clockwise or anti-clockwise. So again do the same thing. This is the point where I am taking the moment B and I am applying the load. It rotates in the anti-clockwise direction, right. This is anti-clockwise rotation and so it is minus and equal to 0. So from this I will be getting the value of Ra is equal to this PL by 2 I can take to the other side. So PL by 2 divided by L which is basically P by 2. So that's the value of Ra. Now I can do sigma Fy equal to 0 which implies the all the upward forces I am considering positive and downward forces as negative. So basically the sign convention what I am following is this. So whatever that is upward is positive. So Ra and Rb are upward. So those are positive values Ra plus Rb. P is downward hence it is minus P equal to 0 which will give me the value of Rb as P minus Ra. Ra is P by 2. P minus P by 2. I am going to get the value as P by 2. So this is the very first part. You need to have the reactions. And uh, for from exam point of view there is no need for you to write all these long steps. If you are familiar with the shortcut methods of calculation of uh, support reactions, you can of course use that. There is no problem. The relevance is to get these two values. If you get these two values, that's fine. You can use any method. So this is the normal or the procedural method of solving it. Now once we have these, now we can go to the previous condition. So represent. So this is P by 2. This is P by 2. We have already calculated the value. This is P. Now we need to divide it into segments. So you can see here point load, point load, segment, point load, point load, segment. You have two segments. Now write the expression segment. Okay. Now segment one. Also, oh, I'm oh, fine. Segment one. So what about segment one? The EI value is EI itself. And I need to have the origin and limit. So 
I will be taking a section is segment 1. So which should be considered the distance x? Whether I should look to the left or I should look to the right. That's a basic criteria. If I'm looking to the left, there is just one force. If I'm looking to the right, there are two forces. So it's always better to look to the left. If you want to look to the left, this should be your x. Which means you can consider A as the origin. Okay. And what will be the limit? If this point is the origin, the limit of segment 1 is 0 to L by 2. Okay. So it's going to be 0 to L by 2. Now, what about the moment? Okay. What will be the moment? If I'm taking the section here, I'm looking to the left. Force is P by 2. Liver arm is X. So the magnitude is P by 2 into X. Right. That is P X by 2. Now, what about the sign? Whether it is positive or negative. Now, what I'm talking is a moment about a point. This was summation of moment where you can use clockwise anti-clockwise but here it is moment at a point moment at this cross section so you should follow the sign convention as sagging and hogging so i want to know whether it is sagging or hogging so this is the point i hold it here at the free end i'm having a load i apply the load it is bending in the sagging form right this form is sagging so this is a positive value okay so this is plus now i'm going to talk I'm going to talk about the segment two ei is ei itself Okay, now, so segment two, I'm taking a section. Now I want to decide whether I want to look to the left or to the right. If I'm looking to the left, there are two forces. If I'm looking to the right, there is just one force. So it's always preferable to look to the right. If I want to look to the right, I'll be considered point B as the origin. What about the limit? So this is zero. So the segment two is zero to L by two. Okay, and what about the moment? If I take section here, so when I consider B as the origin, this will be my X. So the moment will be P by 2 into X, that is P X by 2. What about the sign convention? So here at the free end, I'm having a force. This is sagging, hence it is plus. So that's the table we are having. Now we just need to calculate the value M square DX by 2 EI. Okay, so there are two segments, so this will be divided further into two. So the first one, the limit is 0 to L by 2. Moment is Px by 2, so Px by 2 whole square, dx by 2 ei, plus segment 2, again 0 to L by 2. And the moment is Px by 2 whole square dx by 2 ei. And you can find that this and this are same. So I can write it as u equal to 2 times 0 to L by 2 px by 2 whole square dx by 2 ei. Okay. We know that when there is an integration from 0 to L by 2 multiplied by 2, you can reform this integral as 0 to L. Right. 0 to L by 2 twice means 0 to L. So inside I'm having p square x square dx by this becomes 4 4 into 2 8 ei and when i do that integration constant is p square by 8 ei i am taking it outside p square by 8 ei is a constant x square integral x square becomes x cube by 3 in the limit 0 to l becomes l cube by 3 that is p square l cube by 3 into 8, 24 EI. So that's the answer for the strain energy. So whenever we are dealing with simply supported beam, there will be an additional step. That additional step is to calculate the reactions. In the case of cantilevers, we were not calculating the reactions because we were only looking or we were only considering the origin as the origin on the free end side so the reactions were not coming into the picture while writing the moment expressions but here it's not the case we have to calculate the reactions to solve this and the reactions can be calculated in this similar way okay <clears throat> now let's consider the second case so in case two i'm going to deal with a simply supported beam acted upon by udl over the entire span let it be w say lei now here we need to calculate the reactions 
Okay, so what will be the reactions? Okay, for those from seeing itself, we can say the values are going to be WL by 2 and WL by 2. I'm just doing the procedural way for those who are having confusion regarding that. So we'll make it quick. So I need to have names. So let this be A and this be B. So I'm going with sigma MB equal to 0. So I'll be getting, I'm calling this as uh, say RA and RB. So if I'm taking a moment with respect to B, the force is RA times Livram is L and it is clockwise. So this is clockwise. So RA L is clockwise. This W into L is the other load because W is a distributed load. So W into L is the magnitude and it acts at the centroid of the load which is at the center. So the lever arm is L by 2. Okay. So it acts like this. Hence it is anti-clockwise. So minus W L into L by 2 equal to 0 which implies R A is going to be I'm taking this to the right side that is W L square by 2 into 1 by L which is W L by 2. Now I can do the same thing sigma f y equal to 0 considering this as the positive direction whichever that force in the upward direction I am considering positive. So R A plus R B minus W L downward equal to 0 which implies R B is equal to W L minus R A that is W L by 2. I am going to get it as W L by 2. So I have the value of R A and R B. Those values are available. Okay, so I can uh, represent the beam as forces. So it's getting represented like this L E I, and this is W L by 2, W L by 2. So, how many point loads? Location of point loads 1 and 2. So, just one segment. Now, what about this? S E L O M. How many segment? just one okay EI EI is constant what should be the limit okay the limit so I need to consider a section okay I'm considering a section here so I'm looking to the left I'm looking to the right I'm having the same section right so whether I consider A as origin or I consider B as origin it doesn't make any difference so just for a change I'm considering A as origin okay let A be the origin now if A is the origin this distance will be x what will be the limit if this is the origin point the segment when will be having the limit from this is 0 this is l so 0 to l okay and what about the moment when you consider the moment here you are having two moments uh, sorry two forces contributing to the moment when you have such a case deciding whether it's going to be a sagging moment or a hogging moment is tough when you consider this whole case so what you can do is you can use the concept which I normally call as the Rajneegant principle. Okay, Rajneegant principle is basically the principle of superposition. You might have watched uh, Rajneegant movies. So in those movies, you might have wondered even if there are, there are a hundred villains coming to attack our hero, he will be able to beat them all. Okay, but if you watch that stunt again in a slow motion mode, what you are going to find is that you will be finding always Rajneegant was will be standing on one side and all the villains will be standing a football field apart from him okay and once the stunt start these villains start running towards him and you should know that you should notice that every villain will be, will be running at different speeds okay and why is that happening when these villains are running at different speed you can see that the our hero will be hitting only one villain at a time even though they are there are hundred villains coming towards him he will be hitting one villain at a time okay what if this hundred villains were standing here itself and Renegand was running through them okay once he run towards them everyone will be attacking together and he won't be able to resist so that's what we call it as Rajnikanth principle or principle of superposition Okay, and it is valid if the villains are standing one field apart, okay, football field apart and they are coming running towards him, right? So, similarly, here we have two villains, 
Okay, this is villain one, this is villain two. If you consider both villains together, we may not be able to beat them. Okay, so we will consider one villain at a time. So we'll consider this WL by two villain first. So when you consider WL by two villain, what is the moment that is WL by two is creating? So this WL by two is the force lever on is X. So I'm going to get WL by two into X, right? WL by 2 into X force into liver arm. Now I will be putting the sign for that. Okay. So if I considering only this villain, this villain is creating a sagging moment. Okay. So I will assign plus to it. Now I'm thinking about the second villain. The second villain is this UDL. Okay. When I consider this UDL alone, what is the moment? The load will be W times X, right? W is the distributed load, X is the distance. So W X is the load and it acts at a distance of X by two. Okay. So I will get W X into X by two. W X is the force. X by two is the distance because this load will be acting at the center. So X by two is the distance. I get the magnitude as W X into X by two. Now I need to think about the sign. So I will take this, this uniform pressure or force acting. It's creating a hogging moment. So it is minus. Okay, so when we have such a problem and there are a lot of forces and we want to calculate the moment, apply the Rajinikanth principle or the principle of superposition. Okay, now once you have this, you can just go for integration. So I'm going to the integrate. So u equal to integral m square dx by 2 ei. So the limit is from 0 to L and the moment value is this. That is w l x by 2 minus w x square by 2 whole square dx by 2 ei okay so what you can do is you can take out the constants so the constants is w square <coughs> and 2 square that is 4 so w square 4 comes from the numerator there is a 2 so w square by 8 ei into integral so what remains is Lx minus x square whole square dx. Okay, so this integration you can do. Okay, it's not a hard job. I'm running out of the paper. I don't want to get into the next paper here. So once you do this integration, you are going to get the final result for this strain energy. Okay, we'll continue this. We'll see a few more problems. Okay, I don't want to have long videos because long videos are usually boring. Okay, I'm not going to tell that short videos are interesting, but long videos are definitely boring. I don't want to go into that extent. Okay, so we'll find a bit here and we'll uh, discuss the next cases in the next video. Thank you.